Hello, my name is Kelly McCord from Up Level Academy. In today's training, I'm going to show you how you can up level your GCC English language grade in less than three months. So this training is for you if you feel that currently you are not achieving the grade that you desire, that you need, and that truly reflects your abilities. So you feel that you're not getting the grade you deserve. Perhaps you find yourself in class confused constantly. No matter how many questions you ask, you don't seem to get the answers that you require to understand the key concepts. And because of this, you may feel that you're always two steps behind your classmates. And as a result, you're left feeling dismayed, demotivated, and disheartened. So much so that you now despise English. Now, if that's where you are and that's how you feel, then this training is definitely going to help you. And I want you to know that I understand. I completely empathize with you because I felt the same way about maths. I absolutely loved it. I was constantly at the bottom end of my class. I was always scoring pretty much the lowest out of all the students. And I felt just like a failure because I couldn't fathom it. No matter how many times I went over it, I just couldn't master it. And I felt very overwhelmed. However, I also knew that I had big aspirations. And because maths is a core subject, I needed it. So I implemented the methodology that I'm about to show you with English in my studies for maths. And it worked like a charm. I exceeded expectations, obtained the grades that I needed and deserved so that I could go on through my academic career, continue that to a high level and have created a life that I love. Now, I say this to you not to impress you, but to press upon you the importance of your core subject English. I understand and empathize that you may not be in a place where you feel motivated about it. However, you do need it. And as a result, I need three non-negotiable commitments from you. And the reason for that is without them, I won't be able to coach, guide and educate you in this methodology. I know it'll work for you, but we've all heard the expression, you can take a horse to water but you can't make it drink. So even if I give you your water, as it were, the methodology to help you with your grades in English, unless you adopt these three non-negotiables, it's not going to work. So the first one is I need you to be committed to change. I need you to be open. Why? Well, as Einstein stated, if you continuously do the same actions, you're going to get the same results. In fact, he said that the definition of insanity is repeating the same actions, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's not going to happen. So unless you're committed to change and to do things differently, your situation won't change for you. The second non-negotiable is I need you to take responsibility for your GCC English language grade. Now, that does not mean blame. Consider this, your mobile phone. You are responsible for your phone, right? What does that look like? Well, you don't leave it exposed. You put it in its case. You might have a screen protector. You don't leave it laying around. You put it in your pocket or in your bag to keep it safe. If anything happens to it, for example, you accidentally drop it and the screen cracks, you take responsibility by trying to repair it. You might look it up, do some research, take it to an expert. Well, that's what I'm asking you to do with your GCC English language grade. 
I need you to take responsibility for it. I need you to care for it and care about it and do what you need to to ensure you get the grade that you deserve, desire, and need. And the third non-negotiable is you must be willing to work. And that means putting in the effort, even if you don't feel like it, because without that, you won't be able to implement the method. And so it's really important that you forget what you've done in the past, work-wise, and take a fresh approach. So those are the three non-negotiables that I need for you for this training to affect your grade as you wish. So why is English important? Well, as I said before, it is a core subject. But imagine life without the command of English language. What would that be like? Well, imagine you're on going on a journey. You're in a car, you're driving along, and you hit your first roadblock. You don't pass your GCC English language exam. That means you can't continue your studies as you want. You can't go into sixth form. You can't go to college. You can't go to university. Because, yes, your A-levels and your B-tech become more important, but they still look at your GCCs, particularly the core subjects, because they want to know that you have a foundation in these, because they will help you with your academic career. So you can't continue on with the studies as you as you like so you have to take a different route so you you do and you're feeling a little bit dissatisfied and then you hit the next roadblock you can't get your desired job why because nowadays it's not just about completing a C cv you need a personal statement you need a cover letter a lot of them now require you to answer almost essays. And because you don't have the appropriate language skills for that, you, you find that you're not completing them adequately. So you don't get your dream job. You do, however, find a job and you're happy because you're working, but you're not fulfilled. It's not one that you truly desire. It's not one that really lights you up and inspires you. So you start to feel a little bit of resentment and you carry along your next roadblock. You can't express yourself. You can't express yourself with your clients and customers, your colleagues. So you feel stifled. You have these big ideas, but you can't articulate them. But you still you continue on and then boom, another roadblock. You can't communicate. Your relationships start to break down with friends, loved ones, and you're just feeling now overwhelmed and just completely dissatisfied. Now, if you're thinking that that seems a bit of an overstatement, I'm here to tell you it's not. I love English and I'm really passionate about it. And I am living proof of what mastering English can do for you because I've seen it in my own life. I graduated from the University of Nottingham having studied English and that opened up a myriad of jobs for me and a myriad of experiences that were beyond my wildest dreams. And I'm very aware, you've heard of the expression, you know, punched above your weight. Well, I definitely have done that in terms of my career. And that is because I was able to use my skills and knowledge from English and apply them to real life settings. So, for example, when I was graduating from university, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But there was an opening that I saw in a university as a lecturer in China. And I was 21 at the time. and I did not feel qualified. Yes, I had some teaching experience. I had done some internship work with school programs. But this was a university. This was teaching students who are of a similar age and teaching them a curriculum that I don't really know much about. But I thought, you know what? This is going to be an adventure. I may as well just apply. Now, because 
I was able to break down the application form. I knew exactly what they were looking for. I was able to tailor my answers to them. Now, I didn't lie. I put all of the relevant information, but I was able to sift out what was important, what was relevant. And I got the interview. And because of my language skills, I was able to showcase my teaching ability. And as a result, I became a lecturer at a university in China. I was able to coach my students through their TEM8 exam, which is the final exam for English majors at university. And I also helped to teach IELTS, the International English Language exam as well, so that the students could then go and work and study abroad. And I won a Best Teacher Award over there as well. And it was a phenomenal experience. And it's only because I have mastered English that I was able to achieve that. Not because I was the most qualified or had the most experience. When I came back to the UK, I still was unsure what I wanted to do. So I applied for an internship at um, Captain Law School. And again, there were people who had law degrees, who had work experience in law firms. But I thought, again, I may as well check it out and try. And again, I was able to come up with compelling cases and arguments and use research, my research skills to develop my answers and articulate myself well. And as a result of that, I actually earned a place in the law school. I turned it down because I didn't want to be a lawyer. But again, it was not because I was the most qualified or had the most experience, but because I knew how to use English language. And then further on down the line, I discovered my true passion and purpose in teaching and tutoring. And that led me to work in the BBC with um, the language program. And it's also been a privilege to serve hundreds of students as well. And that is where English has allowed me to flourish as a person professionally and personally. So I'm really thankful for it. But don't just take my word for it. I know that if you can master your GCC English language, then you can achieve your wildest dreams. And how do I know this? Because my students, I've seen it. So you're going to meet Jubin. And Jubin is just an amazing student who really took on board everything that I'm about to show you. So this is Shubin's story. It's been Shahabi and I've been a student of Kelly's for over four years now. Over all this time, Kelly has extremely helped me become more confident in my English and literature essay writing, as well as expanding my vocabulary and learning new language devices. Her ways of teaching have helped me understand all the material needed for my GCSEs, from analyzing and picking out sections of the source and going in depth about the many language techniques used, as well as how the source is structured by the author or poet. She further assisted me by going back to the basics, checking my grammar and spellings. She has also been very helpful and keen individually as a person, as she would send me English language and English literature essay based questions, where she would also work with the questions I find most difficult to help me succeed. I am sure that Kelly's tutoring will be useful for all kinds of students, as we use many different techniques, one of them being great vision, auditory explanations and examples to boost the student's progression of taking in, memorizing and learning valuable information that will help students reach their So that's Jubin's story. Like and where is he now? Well, Jubin has now been offered places at university. He's been able to use what he's learned with his English GCSE and applied it to his BTECs and A-levels, and then in his at university applications. But again, Kelly has here been are more great success stories. Of, sorry, here are more success stories that I'm about to show you. So this is Ashney, and she was able to boost her grade from a four to an eight. Kelly has been a great support these last few years. Not only did she boost me from a 5 to an 8 in English literature, she also boosted me from a 4 to an 8 in English language. None of this would have been possible without her motivation and her support. She is hands down one of the most 
incredible English teachers I've ever met. Kelly has, Kelly has been a great support these last few years. Thank you, Kelly, for your courage, guidance, and friendship, and even your discipline. English isn't my strongest subject, but during these years, you have made me realize how much I have improved in my English. Your precious tips and advice have brought me to grade three to a five English in English language, which is unbelievable. Can't thank you enough for all your help. With a grade five, I can pursue my dreams and finally move. On. Thank you, Kelly, for your. I started tuition because I wanted extra support in my English studies and wanted to achieve the grades I knew I could get. From tutoring with Kelly, I achieved a newfound confidence and passion for English, as well as an advanced understanding of the English subject, which I managed to exceed my target grade in. What I loved about working with Kelly was how comfortable she made me feel when coming up with new ideas, which was really important in building my self confidence. Thanks to Kelly, I found that I wanted to participate more in class discussions. As I was confident in my ideas, which enabled me to take English further at a higher level, Kelly also encouraged me to expand on my thoughts and arguments, which I was able to bring into my exams in sophisticated and original ways, which led me to achieve higher grades. To so, my question to you is: Where do you want to be? I promise to show you in this training how you can achieve the grade that you want in your GCC English language exam. But you must actually take action on what I share. Otherwise, it's what Einstein stated: you'll stop repeating the same actions, but expecting different results. It's insane. It's not going to happen. So I promise to show you, but I want you to make a promise to yourself. That you're actually going to do something about it, if you find it valuable, which I'm sure you will. So my goals to you, because it's always important to set goals. So from this training, from watching this, you will know one why current methods are not working for you. It's really important to understand and reflect like what's not working and why, because that way then you will. Know well what not to do, and if you find yourself falling back into those habits because we're creatures of habits and it will happen, that you're able to correct it and allow yourself then to move forward. Two, to know what is possible for you with GCC English language, so that you feel actually, I know that I've been feeling demotivated and I might hate the subject, but it's a useful it's a useful skill that will not just help me to. Pass an exam, but I can carry it on throughout my whole life. And then three, know the four E reverse engineering method for success, and then implement that. So that, as I say, you can use it to get your desired grade in your exams and beyond. So first of all, the current system is outdated. We've drawn upon in the UK the Victorian model for teaching and learning, and look, has much really changed? I don't think so. So it's an outdated system. So it's not your fault that actually the current methods aren't working because they're not designed for today. One of The most fundamental pieces of outdated method, outdated methodology that's in use today is one to one. We all think one to one is better. Why? Well, it has perceived value, right? I mean, I don't blame the thinking. Where does most learning take place? Well, traditionally in a classroom, you have one teacher talking to many. Anything between ten to thirty plus students, and so because a student isn't achieving their best or reaching their potential, the first thing that parents, carers, guardians, and students themselves jump to, they conclude that well, it must be because the student isn't receiving that one-to-one -one support. 
Now, in some cases, that might be the case. There might be, you know, just need a need of some, you know, extra scaffolding and support that one to one can facilitate. But is it the most effective and efficient? And the answer is no. It's like a baby talking to themselves or just studying on your own, even with another teacher there. And it's just one teacher, one tutor, one student is still very limited and very restrictive. And it doesn't work like that. Why? Why? We're going to go into why in a moment, and I'm going to show you an alternative. But another outdated method is relying on school teachers. So we rely on school teachers to give the information, which is why you may have signed up to extra clubs after school to try or at revision booster sessions because you thought, okay, the teacher is teaching one to many, so I will have one to one teacher support or at least in a smaller capacity. And then it might lead you to study harder and studying longer. And all that leads to is frustration. Why? Because the teacher is already overloaded. They have so many students they have to deal with. On top of that, they have to, you know, answer to other people as well. The principal to Ofsted. And so, they already have so much on. And again, they're teaching different ages. You know, 11 year olds in year seven are very different to GCSE students in year 10 and year 11. So yes, they're very good at teaching the subject, but do they have the in-depth knowledge to carry you from the grade that you're on to exceeding your expectation? And so because of the shortcomings there, you might feel, okay, if I just study harder, study for longer hours, but you're, again, you're just doing more of the same. So you feel stress, overwhelmed, because let's face it, you have other subjects to contend with. And then again, in person and face-to-face. -face. Another outdated practice is that people seem to want in-person, face-to-face tuition. But the problem with that is, it's an inconvenience, let's face it. If you have to travel to get to the tuition center or to the tutor's home, then nine times out of 10 there's traffic. So you end up being late, which puts you off on the wrong foot going in to the session. Or maybe the, the tutor comes to you, but again, they still have to get to you. And so again, with traffic and transportation issues, they might be late. So again, it sets off the session in a very negative footing. It can be inconvenient because, for example, maybe you've had a last minute change where you're going to a friend's house or you're going to a relative's house. But you need the study session. But you don't want to have to cancel that either. Then what? And obviously with COVID at the moment, it's unsafe to be mixing so much. and ultimately. It's restrictive because, again, if you're having in-person, face-to-face, either at the tutor's home or the tutor's coming to you, or maybe you go to a tuition centre, you're still limited in terms of your interactions with the students. So are you really able to deepen your discussions? And this is where the up-level English language methodology comes into play. You're going to learn how to master your English language using the 4E reverse engineer method. This will help you to move from this outdated methodology into the new that works. So I want you to reverse engineer architect style. Well, what does that mean? It means you work backwards. Think about building a house. You don't just start by, you know, building the foundation or building a wall. You start with the end goal, which means that you design it and you will 
collaborate with other people who are specialists so that you can come up with a design that is not only aesthetically pleasing that you absolutely love, but is has integrity structurally so that it's actually going to you know, withstand the test of time, withstand, you know, the environmental impact, winds and rain. So you start off with the end and goal, and then you work backwards, you break it down into its components. And you have a checklist to make sure that each part is working and functioning for the whole, for the end goal. And that's what we're going to do with your English language exam. So what's possible then with the up levels for our reverse engineering system? You will understand and know what's happening. Many students, when you ask them, what exam board are you studying? What are the style of questions? They don't know. They just kind of model, model the way through it. Whereas with this system, you will know exactly what's happening what is expected of you and what you expect of yourself more importantly you know what grade you're trying to achieve and if you have that focus the chances are you're going to get it you design what you want it's not about your teacher telling you this is the grade this is your predicted grade this is what we expect you to get it's not about your parents telling you oh this is the grade that we expect or even me it's about you thinking okay what grade do i want and designing that. And then that way then you will have a solid foundation so that you can use your English knowledge beyond the exam. It's not just about the exam. Yes, it's very important. And it's a milestone to test what you know. But it's beyond that because English is a skill that will last you a lifetime. So pause the video right now if you need to. Make sure you have a pen and paper at hand or a device to make notes on, because this is where the training really commences. So I need you to make sure that you're able to take notes so that you can get the most value from this and start implementing it as soon as this training's done. So when is the typical time to do exam questions? Or the outdated method is at the end, right? In your course, go through all the curriculum, the topics, the key concepts, and then bam, the questions come at the end. Now, it makes sense logically, right? When you think about it, it seems to make sense. Exam comes at the end, so why not look at the questions at the end after studying everything? I mean, without studying everything, how can you answer the questions anyway, right? Actually, is it really right? Think of it like this, what we just said. You need to start with the end in mind. Why? Because it's going to dictate and determine every other step that comes before it. So without knowing and understanding the end goal, how are you going to make sure that the actions you take are leading you to that? So step one of the 4E model is exam questions. You're reverse engineering, so you start with the exam questions. If you focus on the exam style questions now, you will effectively study. Why? Because you have a clear focus. What you set your intention to is what you'll ultimately achieve. If you ex understand the exam style questions now, you will understand what you're reading. When you're reading passages and texts and extracts, you will have the questions in your mind so you know, okay, I'm reading for this purpose. And it will help you to extrapolate the information quicker and efficiently. If you know what your exam questions are now, you will not feel stressed or worried because you're not left just wondering, what is it about? You know, we know that fear is what? Fear is actually just your imagination. It's the fear really ultimately of nothing. It's the unknown. But if you know what the GCSE exams are, you know what the questions are, then what's there to be scared of? You can then prepare. For example, look at this image and write down, I mean, pause the video uh, if you need to, and just spend 10 seconds writing down everything that you see. What do you notice? You might notice 
somebody on a bike. You might notice a lady with headphones walking dogs. You might notice the person on the bench, the kids. Yeah? That's quite a lot of information that you've extrapolated from this image. Pretty impressive. But is that key information? Now, if I say find the 10 hidden objects in this picture, you're now focusing on finding the sheep, the turtle, the hippo, the pig, the ox, the elephant, the lion, the antelope or deer, fish and giraffe. Now, if I say that, and now I say look for it, you're looking in a different way, aren't you? You're not just glancing over it and looking at what you know stands out for you. You're looking with that in mind. Okay, I need to find the sheep. I need to find. And what's interesting is, did you notice these 10 hidden um, animals before? You might have found one or two if you're lucky. But chances are you wouldn't have found all 10. Because let's face it, they're not the most, um, you know, they're not what you would expect to find in this sort of image. Your GCC English language exam is the same way. If you know the questions, then you know what you're looking for. You help to build that muscle. You train your brain to focus and sift through the information so that you can pinpoint with laser point accuracy the information so that you're able to you know, identify language features. You're able to identify the tonality of the piece. And then you're able to apply your knowledge in a more meaningful manner. Now, how to practice answering exam questions then? So now that you know the questions, the next step is, well, how do you practice answering them? Now, that outdated method focuses on structuring an answer. So you might have seen something like this, where you have the point evidence explained, and then you're given the scaffold of, you know, phrases that you need to use. And if you use them, you'll get a high grade. But if that was effective, why isn't everyone achieving a high grade? It lacks personality, panache, and a personal touch that examiners want. You know, you've probably, if you've looked at the marking criteria, and if you haven't, I strongly urge that you do. You know, it says a student's personal response. What does that even mean? I mean, it's subjective, right? Are you going to get it through this rigid structural approach? No. On top of that, sometimes because of the text, you might feel, well, actually, I can't even apply this set structure to it. Because you've been tightly restrained with it, you don't know how to apply it. Which is why you're feeling of distress and even dismay because you're promised that this will work and it doesn't. So the next E is step two of our four E model is to expand your vocabulary. If you build on your vocabulary, you will expand on your answers because you will have the language to be specific. So you won't waffle. If you know synonyms, you will choose appropriate quotes. Why? Because you'll know what quotes are relevant to the question. You'll know what key information is appropriate. And you won't be put off then by unfamiliar words because even if there are words that you're not too sure of, you'll have some vague understanding. You'll know how to work it out using your extensive vocabulary knowledge. And if you are familiar with a wide range of lexis, which is um, meaning specific vocabulary for specific fields. So, for example, if I was talking about football, I might talk about red card and yellow cards, and you know that's specific to that um, field, as it were. You will then understand different perspectives better. Why? Because you will understand. Well, actually, maybe this person is passionate about this, or they are a professional in this. So it'll help you to be more insightful with your analysis. And let me give you an example. This is George Vest's eulogy of the dog. And it was a speech he gave in court. Um, he's an American senator. Um, I'd highly recommend you looking up this speech. It's one of my favorites. I am a dog lover. And he says, the best friend a man has in the world may turn against him and become his enemy. 
his son or daughter who he has reared with love and care may prove ungrateful. Those who are nearest and dearest to us, those whom we trust with our happiness and our good name may become traitors to their faith. Now, analysis. Overall, the speaker seems to revere the dog as he uses dichotomous lexis to illustrate the loyalty of the dog against the betrayal of humans. Hence, the best friend becomes his enemy. The son or daughter may prove ungrateful. The use of abstract nouns emphasizes the emotion behind the words, which adds to the pathos of the speech. Can you see my specific vocabulary? Actually allows me to go deep in my analysis. Analysis, it's not just waffly, vague statements. It's applicable to this text. And that's what an expansive vocabulary will allow you to do too. And then the next step is how to analyze a text. Now the outdated method asks you to repetitiously look at extracts. So you go over extracts and you might pick out things such as use of adjectives, emotive language, abstract nouns. Now I'm not saying that's bad, that's good. It's great to be able to pinpoint them, but that's not gonna, Help you to pass your exam. It won't help you later on in life. There's no understanding. It's just repetitious an analysis, which leads to repetitious answers. And it reminds me of Einstein's point. If you keep repeating the same actions, you're going to get the same result. So it's unsurprising then that this method doesn't work, which is why step three of the 4E method is expressive writing. It's important that you practice your expressive writing. If you practice writing creatively for different genres and modes, you will deepen your analytical skills because you know why a writer has used them. You have a deeper appreciation of the writing techniques. If you practice writing imaginatively, you will personally engage with extracts because you will have more of an understanding and more of a personal feeling about them. And if you practice creative writing, you'll have insights into different perspectives. Again, you'll think about the different angles, the different points of view, which will allow you ultimately then, when analyzing a text, to be richer in your approach. For example, these are just excerpts from um, students that I've worked with. So this one was a story about the death penalty. Forcefully, yet carefully, they strap his knobbly ankles to the squat oak legs of the electric chair. Although he is very much alive, with his warm blood cascading around his veins, arteries and capillaries, like a stream on its journey to the seas and oceans, it seems futile at this very moment. He is just as much dead as he is alive. Incapacitated, he has no choice but to accept his fate. However, his body is still fighting. You can see the deliberate choice of language and structure and imagery here. It's very powerful. And it conveys their attitude towards the death penalty too. And then this is an extract from one of my students who did an article about celebrities. Celebrities, beacons of inspiration or devils infecting the minds of many. Celebrities act as the spark to the flame of their fans' inspirations. They help inspire those who admire them to make the best of themselves. They help voice out on issues, challenging people to act. Some even may relate to you. What a load of rubbish. The vast majority of these talentless stars are edgy, self-centered and egotistical, and some have become dependent on it. And again, you can see that there are obviously different modes, different genres, different styles of writing. But can you see how each student has used language in a way to not only express their own opinion, but to really impact the audience, the reader? And that's really the distinction between the lower and higher level ability students. It's not just about you, it's about your audience, your reader, which is what communication is about, isn't it? It's a two-way process. 
And you need to be able to affect your examiner, affect your employer, affect your client, colleagues. And that is what the system, this methodology allows you to do because you're always looking at the reverse engineering. What is the goal? What is the outcome I want to achieve? Then what steps do I need need to, to do? What language features do I need to do that, to achieve that? And then how to improve exam techniques. The outdated method, you do in-class assessments and mocks. At that point, it's too late. At least to stress and overwhelm because you don't feel prepared, ironically. And the more you do that, the more you snowball. Which is why step four is exam technique. Set goals. Set specific goals that are measurable so that you know whether you've achieved them or not. Not to make yourself wrong, but so that if you haven't, you know what you need to do to put yourself back on track. Learn to plan. You haven't got a lot of time in exams. And I'm always surprised by the number of students when I ask them, did you make a plan? They say no. Without a plan, how do you know what you're doing, especially under that pressure? So you need to be able to make a quick plan so that if your mind goes blank, if you forget your train of thought, you have something to put you back on track before the time runs out and it's too late. Learn to manage your time so that you're not feeling so pressured. You're able to work within it comfortably, even if you've only got 45 minutes. And then finally, engineering habits. Because those who succeed in their GCSE English language exam have fantastic habits. And again, they work backwards from their desired grade. And if you can do that, it will make things so much easier for you and enjoyable. So the key takeaways for you for the four E reverse engineer is exam questions, expand your vocabulary, expressive writing, and exam technique. So, what do you want to do now? You now have a choice. You can keep doing what you're doing, following the outmoded methods, and seeing if that gets you the grade you desire and desperately need. But let's be honest. Has it worked so far? If it had, you probably wouldn't be here in this training. So do you really want to rely on those outdated methods that seem logical, but as I've just shown you, don't work and are actually ineffective? If not, and you want to empower yourself, then take action now. Book your free 4E reverse engineering call today to empower yourself to achieve the grade you want in your GCC English language exam. Or don't. Nothing will change. You may get the grade that you want. You may not. Is it worth the risk? Or you can book today so that we can reverse and en reverse engineer your GCC English language grade so you get your desired grade so you can up level your academic, professional and personal life. I look forward to speaking with you. Click the button below to book your call today. Thank you.